Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Let's go ahead and take a look at creating this very simple fade in out effect using jQuery. It's pretty simple to use, pretty simple to build, only a couple lines of code. Uh, and it, it's, it's very lightweight and easy to uh, add to a website. And the really cool thing about it is all I need to do is add more images here and this jQuery animation effect is automatically going to be applied to those images as well. So there's no going back in and tweaking the code later if I decide, ooh, instead of eight images I needed 80 images. The code's not going to exponentially grow. Uh, very, very simple to do, very easy. So let's hop over into Dreamweaver and take a look at what we need to do. Actually, I'm going to hop back to the browser. I'm going to refresh this page. And you can see we're back to normal. No jQuery being applied here. All we have are simple images and a border. And I'm using CSS to change the border color on rollover. So pretty simple. We're here in Dreamweaver. Let's get started. Uh, the first thing you're going to notice is we are working in code view. So try to make yourself comfortable with that. Just follow along with me. I'm going to walk you through everything you need to know. It's pretty simple stuff. Like I said, it's it's maybe 10 or 15 lines of code, and it's nothing terribly complicated. Uh, the second thing you need to know is that we are linked to our JavaScript, our jQuery JavaScript file already. We've downloaded it from jQuery.com. If you don't know what I'm talking about or why we need to be linked to this, I have a video on getting started with jQuery, which is basically talking about jQuery, what jQuery is, and linking your HTML file to your jQuery file. Uh, and actually we use this exact HTML file here. So go watch that video and then come back and watch this one once you have your link set up. If you've got your link set up, great. Let's get started. We're going to go ahead and we're adding our code to the head portion of our site. We need to partition off a small area of the head to type our jQuery. Uh, we're not using an external JavaScript file in this case. That would just complicate things. We're going to stay nice and simple in-house and just partition off a chunk of our head area for our jQuery. So open angle bracket and the word script and all we need to say is type and equals open and close double quotes move within the double quotes and say text forward slash JavaScript and then move without or move outside of those double quotes closed angle bracket enter return a couple times open angle bracket forward slash script closed angle bracket to close off your script tag so now within this script area we can add our jQuery so I'm just hitting tab to indent a little. You really don't need to indent. Matter of fact, I won't. And I'm going to start with it. Actually, no, I will to make it look easy, you know, to give you guys a little bit of separation on the video. Uh, I'm going to start with a dollar sign and an open and close parentheses. Within the open and close parentheses, I'm going to type the word document. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say dot ready. So what we're basically saying is Dreamweaver saying, hey, when the document, when this whole page is ready, when it's loaded, Go ahead and do whatever Nathaniel's about to type next, which is open parenthesis function. We want you to execute a function. Open and close parenthesis. Open curly bracket. Enter or return a couple times. Note Dreamweaver kind of spazzing out on us a little bit. Um, it's doing that because we haven't closed off our open parenthesis or our open uh, curly bracket here. So let's do that. We need to close the curly bracket first because that comes first. Close curly bracket and then close parenthesis and then a semicolon. Once we do that, you can see Dreamweaver settles down and it's uh, calmed down a little bit. Now, the function we want uh, jQuery to execute, or what we want it to do when our document is ready, is to take all of our images, our linked images, and reduce the opacity to 50%. Now, what we need to do is scroll down and here in our HTML, we can see that our images are linked images. So it's an anchor, an A tag, and then within that A tag, we've got our IMG or image tag. So now that we know that, we can go ahead and target that. So I'm going to say dollar sign, open and close parenthesis, and then open and close single quotes. Within these single quotes, we can target things just like we would with CSS. We can target HTML tags, we can target IDs, we can target classes. So you could you know, type in pound, you know, div ID if you wanted, or dot sum old class, uh, or whatever. In this case, I don't want to use IDs or classes. I want to target A, which is my anchor tag, IMG. So images within anchor tags, linked images. And what do we want to do then? We want to say dot animate. Open parenthesis, open curly bracket, enter, return a couple times, close curly bracket, close parenthesis, semicolon. So now, right here, this is its own little chunk of code sitting within this greater function. So what do we want to be animated on these linked images when the document loads? Well, we want the opacity to be animated. And so we're going to type opacity first and foremost. And we're going to type colon 0.5. And that's it. Now, 
opacity swings between zero, which is zero opacity, and one, which is 100% opacity. If you're familiar with ActionScript 3.0, it's the same kind of thing. 0.9 would be 90% opacity, 0.2 would be 20% opacity. So now that we've done that, I'm going to save this document. I'm going to go back out to my live version. And by the way, I have this live version here. I just went up here to this, and I'm previewing in Chrome, which is my default browser here uh, within Dreamweaver. So preview in Chrome. And then all you do is you go out your Chrome window and you, you refresh it. Now you can see that as soon as my page loads up, it animates and fades our images to 50% opacity. Awesome, that's exactly what we want. So now that we've done that, we're ready to go ahead and begin animating sort of the hover. When, when you roll your mouse over, we want something to happen. And when you roll the mouse off, we want something to happen as well. So remember, this bit of code is its own little chunk there. So we want to work after it. So I'm going to select out here and hit Enter Return to add a line between these two giant endings, the two giant closing curly bracket parentheses semicolon columns. And I want to, again, start with a dollar sign, open and close parentheses, and again, we're targeting linked images, so A, I, M, G. However, in this case, we're going to say, look, target those and execute a function on hover. So whenever one of these images gets hovered over, open parentheses, function, open and close parentheses, open curly bracket, enter return a couple times, and I'm just going to add a close curly bracket. You know, I'll add the close parenthesis and semicolon as well so we can see what's happening. Now, within this, we're going to, again, say we want this animation to happen. But we're going to have a couple problems because, well, if I just say dollar sign, open and close parenthesis, you know, do the normal A, I, M, G thing, we're already targeting these images, and that's not going to do me much good because when I hover over any of these images, then my animation is going to happen to every linked image. We only want the animation to happen to whatever linked image I happen to be hovering over. Well, how do we do that without assigning a class or uh, an ID to every individual image? Because we certainly don't want to do that. Again, if I have you know a thousand images, then I'm going to be adding you know a thousand lines of or two thousand lines of jQuery code, and I've got to go through and do all kinds of manual, oh, blah 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 blah. You know, tell me about it. I don't want to do that. So what we can do is within the open and close parentheses, just type the word this, and that basically is saying, hey, whatever HTML element I'm hovering over. That, I want you to go ahead and do this thing that I'm about to tell you to do. So the first thing you want to tell it to do is to stop. And that's just stop whatever animation's going on. If it's fading in or out, we want you to stop that right now before we go and apply another animation on top of that and sort of have animation on top of animation on top of animation and potentially get below 50% opacity or above, you know, I don't, it's just, it can be funky. So we, we don't want any kind of weird choppiness or, or craziness happening. So the first thing we're going to do is say stop and then we're going to say dot animate, just like we did before. Open parenthesis, open curly bracket, and here we're going to say opacity, colon, one, and then close curly bracket, close parenthesis, semicolon. So basically all this is saying is whatever thing I happen to be hovering over right then, first off stop, and then animate the opacity to 100%. Let's save this and see what happens. Come back out here, and if we did everything right, it's going to work. When I roll over, hey, look at that. It comes up to 100%. Roll away, well, nothing happens yet because we haven't coded anything to happen. But you can see I can roll over all of my images and bring them up to 100% opacity. Pretty snazzy. Reload the page, and look at that. They fade back to 50% opacity. Now, jQuery is pretty smart. It knows that included in a hover typically is the opposite of hover, or getting off of whatever's being hovered over. So we don't really have to build another huge chunk of code. All we're going to do is add to this function that's already happening. So what we need to do is place a comma after our closing curly bracket. So right here within this function, we've got this whole chunk of stuff happening. Right after that, we want to go comma and space and add the word function. Again, with our normal open and close parenthesis, open curly bracket, enter or return a couple times, and a close curly bracket. And now you can see this lines up and creates that curly bracket, or close curly bracket, close parenthesis, semicolon. Within this function, we need to again go dollar sign, open and close parenthesis, this, or say dot, stop, open and close parenthesis, dot, animate, open parenthesis, open angle bracket, opacity, colon, 0.5, uh, close angle bracket, excuse me, then close parenthesis, and semicolon. Let's save this and let's check it out to see if we got what we want. Reload, roll over, roll away, roll over, roll away. Look at that. So there, our images are now lighting up and then fading back into oblivion when we roll away. 
very, very cool. Now, there is still a little bit of control you have over this as far as the speed in which this stuff fades in and out. So I'm just going to show you how to do that real quick. You can do that by after, you can see here the, the opacity is sort of wrapped within these curly brackets. Right after that concluding curly bracket, if you place a comma, and then you can either just punch in a number like 5,000, that would be 5 seconds, or 1,000, or 500, it would be half a second. Or you can even use the words, and I'm going to put these within single quotes, fast, which means just, hey, fade in fast. I'm going to save that. Let's check it out. Refresh the page. Boom. You can see it fades in very fast, and it fades out a little slower than it fades in. I want it to fade out even slower, though. So down here, after my the fade out animation, I'm going to, within single quotes again, just type the word slow. So we want you to zoom into 100% opacity very fast, and then zoom back to 50% opacity slowly. Let's reload the page and see what happens. See that? Boom. 100% opacity and then slowly fades back. This gives a very cool effect as you bounce from image to image where the image that you just rolled over is still a little bit alive and, and maybe glowing a little bit from your mouse touching it. So it's a neat little effect uh, to throw in and use in addition to just the fact that it's a, this pure jQuery fade in out effect. But just know that you can go in here and you can replace fast and slow and the um, quotations that are going with them with you know milliseconds, 5,000 if you want to last 5 seconds, or 10,000 for 10 seconds, or whatever you want. Uh, and that's, that's it. We've created, you can see here, a few lines of code. And we've created this really neat fade in out effect uh, using JavaScript and jQuery. And just to illustrate the point, I'm going to grab all of these images, enter a return. I'm going to paste them in here. So now we have instead of eight images, 16 images. All right, and You can see they all automatically have this effect applied to them. Very, very easy to add more images and automatically have this jQuery effect applied regardless of how many images you add. Because again, we're targeting the linked images. Now, if you had like a linked image in your header that you didn't want uh, to be targeted, what you could do is just place all of these images within a div or you know like a portfolio div or something and just start with you know pound portfolio a i m g so then linked images within the portfolio div would be what are targeted in this case i don't have that problem i'm just linking i'm targeting excuse me all linked images and just like that we have created a very cool very simple jquery fade in out effect in dreamweaver I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a thing or two. Go check out the website. That's www.tutvid.com. Make sure you follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, the links for both, respectively, are in the description to this video. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll catch you later.